It can be nice to incorporate color of the moment into that base or capsule wardrobe. That way it keeps it feeling a little bit more uplifted, keeps it from getting boring, and it's also a really nice way to incorporate current trends by using color. Everything in my apartment is now beige. Beige is bullshit. Hi everyone, fashion stylist Tasha Julie here, and in today's video I thought we would have a little style try on and chat about some color combinations I have recently been loving, things that I have personally worked into my fall wardrobe, things that I'm incorporating to make jeans outfits, everyday outfits, and one of the things that helps my everyday styling clients to get dressed more easily is having that really solid base or capsule wardrobe, but that is comprised of mostly basic pieces in mostly neutral colors. And so how do we keep that from becoming a total snooze fest? Color incorporated into that base or capsule wardrobe can keep everything feeling really fun and keep it from getting bland or boring, which by coincidence does happen to be something that I covered in my eight fall fashion trends for those of us who are sort of trendy, but not overly. It is in my most recent videos in case you missed it. A couple of notes before we get into the try on and the color combination chat. I do wanna mention that everything I'm wearing will be linked in the description box below, but I highly encourage you to go in and shop your closet and practice a little something that I refer to as creativity over consumption. Now you might be wondering why I would say such a thing. I have noticed that in my job as a fashion stylist, I don't really think that any job is ever just one thing, but I basically wear two different hats, figuratively, not literally, and they are polar opposites. I'm noticing more and more that one is conflicting with the other. So one aspect of my job is to style people for red carpet, appearances, photo shoots. So the highly curated images that the general population is consuming is leading them to buy into the fantasy. I'm noticing more and more that my everyday styling clients have been fed these highly curated smoke and mirrors images, which I can tell you firsthand they are, I've worked on them. They have been designed to sell you something. So that's why I talk about prizing creativity and shopping your closet over consumption, because people who buy into the lie that the fashion industry is feeding them end up constantly chasing a fantasy that does not exist. But since we all need to wear clothes, I don't assume you live in a nudist colony if you clicked on a video about clothes, let's talk about how we keep that base or capsule wardrobe comprised of mostly neutrals and basic pieces, feeling fun and fresh and of the moment. Okay, before we talk about this next color combination, if you've ever gotten dressed and noticed that your top has little shoulder bumpies from the hanger, a quick way to get rid of it is to give it a blast with the hairdryer on warm or hot setting as long as it's a fabric that can be exposed to heat. Getting back to this color combination of cobalt and the trousers are actually gray. They can kind of look black on camera, but they are gray. I think cobalt's a really fun pop of color for any of us that like to do a little bit more or if maybe you're just in that mood. You go to your closet and you select, I don't know, that lumpy blue sweater. It's still semi-neutral, especially for those of us who like to wear pops of color every now and then, but don't want to come across looking like Rainbow Bright or a bag of Skittles. I think incorporating too many loud or over-the-top pieces into a wardrobe can be really, really hard to have pieces that mix and match and play well together, especially quickly if you're just trying to get dressed and head out the door. Trying to style more ostentatious pieces is fun for an occasion or like serving a look, but just trying to get dressed and pop out the door and you've got this whole rainbow mess in front of you and you're like, what goes with what? I'm not really sure. That's one of the reasons that I talk about having a mostly neutral base or capsule wardrobe, simply because the pieces do play together a little bit more nicely and it's easier to get dressed quickly. But cobalt blue, it's fun, it's bright, but it's not like super severe or in your face or hard to style. So these trousers have a lot of zippers on them and I don't know if it comes across that well on camera, but even a wider pocket down here. So there's a lot going on on the trousers and for that reason, I have intentionally skipped putting on a belt. You could probably do it if you wanted to, but I just chose to skip it. And I noticed the funniest thing when I put these on, this zipper unzips all the way down to almost the knee. And it is the largest, craziest pocket I have ever seen in women's pants. Like you could put a sandwich, your lip balm, your iPad. Like you don't even need a purse if you're wearing these pants. No, really, what woman's gonna put a sandwich in her pants? It's funny how some things really are in the eye of the beholder, which brings me to my next color, which is of course 
red. I almost never used to wear red. I don't know if you guys have ever had something that you kind of thought didn't look the best on you and every time you wore it, somebody was like, oh my gosh, you look so good in that. That's how I feel about red. I didn't used to like to wear it because I have really fair skin and anytime I get any sort of red splotchiness, it's like hyper noticeable on such light skin. And I always thought that the red really kind of accentuated that, so I tend to shy away from it. But since every time I did wear red, which was rare, somebody said that I looked nice in it, I decided to try it out a little bit more. And I actually do like it on myself. I think a lot of people tend to gravitate toward wearing black with red, and I think that's fine. I think it looks great, but it's kind of expected. So, and especially for daytime, I don't wanna wear a ton of black all the time. I do sometimes, but not all the time. So for daytime, I would pair red with a lighter jean. This is one of my tips. I've tried it with darker denim, and it kind of feels a little bit American flag-ish to me, and it doesn't look the best. So I like red in a casual look with a lighter wash jean, and I think it would also be great with gray, but for daytime, I chose to go with this lighter kind of neutral beige suede jacket and then some neutral shoes as well. I also thought this would be really cute with a pair of Nike Cortez sneakers. I happen to have the pair with the red swoosh on it, but sporty isn't really my vibe, so I would prefer it with these kind of shoes, but if you're looking to do something a little bit more comfortable for a lot of walking around, or if you do enjoy a sporty look, I think a sneaker, especially with a red accent, could be really cute. All right, sorry about the interruption. I had to take that jacket off. It's getting way too warm in here, and I don't know if you can actually see now what I mean about my skin tending to show red. But back to what I was saying about red, I also really love to pair it with purple. I think that's a really great way to sort of have a fun contrasting pop of color. And I especially think that would be great for a dressed up or more of an event look look rather than like a casual everyday look, which I just kind of prefer to keep pretty neutral. I think red with purple is something that might escape most people's thoughts when they're putting things together, but I happen to really like it, especially for like an occasion look or dressed up, something a little more involved for maybe an event or something like that. But for every day, I like to kind of keep red with neutrals. And then for more of an amped up look, I think that you could go black, purple, and you can't go wrong with a little red dress if you want to do something a little bit more fun than a little black dress for evening. Speaking of red dresses, I have a question for you guys. I'd love to know your opinion in the comments about a red dress for a wedding. Now, of course, we need to consider the type of wedding. If it's a very religious church wedding, I, of course, would say no. But if it's a little bit more of a casual or evening or upscale without a church, it could be okay, but it wouldn't probably be one of my first thoughts or suggestions. I'd love to know how you all feel about red dresses at weddings. Let me know. You guys, I love this top so much. And it actually reminds me of a point that I wanted to share with you guys regarding base or capsule wardrobes. When you're thinking of incorporating basics like a t-shirt, this is literally just a t-shirt. But it's got this fun bat wing-ish silhouette. So adding everyday pieces like a t-shirt in like a fun or modern silhouette can also be a really great way to keep your base or capsule wardrobe from feeling stale or boring. I love this so much. So this color combination of chocolate and army green for fall is another really fun one. Also the belt, this is kind of the epitome of like the shoemaker son going barefoot. How does the fashion stylist not have more than one chocolate brown belt? I have one, but it's at my studio, so I popped this on with black. But funny enough, I think it still actually works, and it almost looks a little mismatched intentionally and sort of amps up the look and makes it a little more fun without it being like so constricted and monochromatic. So maybe it was a happy accident that my chocolate brown belt is not here. And then circling back to having fun with proportions or cuts and incorporating basic pieces that are a little bit more elevated, these trousers as well with their intentional kind of crop and then flare to them paired with the chocolate brown boots that play off of the top and would have played off of my chocolate brown belt if it wasn't at my studio but you guys get the idea this is a great fall look if i needed a coat i would probably throw it on with a gray one to keep it from being too predictable you could go brown neutral taupe i think that would be great too but let's try it on with a gray and see how that looks Okay, so other than the bat wing of this top giving me a little bit of trouble getting it into the sleeve of the coat, I definitely think gray is the vibe. I'm really loving this combination of like earthy neutral tones all together, but it's a little bit more elevated because of the elevated basics, like I mentioned, the fun cut of the bat wing top, the slightly oversized billowy look of the pant. But altogether, this is a look that I'm loving, and as soon as it's cool enough in LA for me to wear it, I'm definitely going to be doing so. 
All right, guys, this is the next look. And also, sorry in advance if my hair looks weird. Tomorrow I have my end of summer, beginning of fall hair keratin treatment, and my hair gets really wild when it's untreated, so please pardon my appearance. But back to the next everyday kind of jeans outfit and color combination that I've really been loving. You're probably like, yeah, we know you love burgundy. So burgundy and navy in this look. These are the same jeans from the olive t-shirt look. And I'm wearing them because I really wanted to showcase two things. The great capsule wardrobe, having a piece that serves multiple purposes. You don't need 300 pairs of jeans that you never wear because you only gravitate toward the two that you like. Trust me, I've been there. And also to show you guys how easy it is to take pieces that you wear frequently, refresh them with of the moment colors. Overall color combination, burgundy, navy, gray. And the boots are chocolate brown to kind of tie in with the navy and the cardigan as well. Look how easy that was just to throw on a duster and make this look so much more put together. It's literally just a t-shirt and jeans, very comfortable everyday jeans outfit, but the duster cardigan really amps everything up and it's in this sort of fun of the moment, still slightly Western-ish motif. I actually heard it referred to as the horse girl aesthetic on TikTok. You know how TikTok likes to name everything, but I actually thought that was kind of cute. But um, speaking of cute, I really love this outfit. This is something that I would wear once it's a little bit cooler. Um, it's way too hot in here for me to be wearing this for long, but I wanted to show it to you guys. Also, I've had this for a long time, so I want to apologize in advance. I will link something similar if I can find it, but this I know is probably sold out, and I hate when people do that, so I'm sorry. So for this look, I started out with a piece from my base or capsule wardrobe, these wide leg dark navy jeans. I can see in the monitor that they're coming off as a little bit more black, but they are navy. So the olive green and navy has been one of my of the moment favorite color combinations these days. And to keep things even a little bit more on trend, I've incorporated this fun little sort of western-ish belt. It's been way too hot to wear a jacket in LA, but just in case for inspiration, I did want to show you guys how I would incorporate a jacket into this look as well for an overall easy, casual, everyday outfit. When I was in about 10th grade, there was this really annoying boy in my school who learned that black is the absence of color and wouldn't stop saying that running around the school. And I have never forgotten that since. And he's probably right, black is not a color, but camel certainly is. Who am I kidding? Camel's a fancy word for beige. I think it's a really nice, elevated, more sophisticated way to sort of break up all black. But again, playing off the idea of having a really great capsule or base wardrobe, I certainly wouldn't say this is the most colorful look that I've shown you out of all of the outfits today. But I included it here because I think black and camel is a really elevated, kind of sophisticated way to break up an all black look. And this look also started out with two really easy capsule wardrobe pieces, the black tee, black jeans, then of course just slightly elevated with the belt and this camel coat. And I think black is something a lot of us gravitate toward during the fall and winter months. And since it can lean a little bit boring or even a little bit harsh on those of us who are pasty white like me, I think that the camel is a really nice and sort of a sophisticated way to play with the color combination. All right guys, that's it for the color combination of everyday fall outfits or jeans looks, things that are built off of a base or cap wardrobe. I'd love to know which of the looks were your favorites. Leave me a comment and let me know. I hope to see you soon in another video and until then, be well!